so welcome to this new tutorial. In this uh, short tutorial I will show you how you can create a component and of course you can also check out the assets die that I have shown previously. Um, but uh, creating an asset that we can draw is quite easy. Only The only thing that you have to do is you create your mesh inside the sub create. I highly recommend this it works the best in my opinion and for lobs so create all the geometry inside of the stage context or inside of your lob network works the best also in regards to uh, not having any viewport issues and hollow uh, meshes and so on um, this was ha what happening when you would build the assets in, in the obj context um, and the nice advantage is also when you have your own lob network that you could that you would be able to copy and paste it into your new project and have all the geometry and all the dependencies inside so here we um, place the picard in the sub create very easy i placed an output nothing special and the next thing that we do is we um, will type component builder or component and choose the component builder and you get the entire network right in here. And this is everything that you need to have in order to be able to create your own USD um, asset with proxy geometry for the display as well as simulation geometry. So this is mostly automatic or yeah, it's a simple version so that you don't have to do this. And what we first of all need is we need to import the mesh into the component geometry. And we will do this with uh, object merge. And here we use this. Here in the um, geo uh, component geometry, we will see some additional um, helping text and boxes and we link the output pick hat from this upgrade into the required this is our render geometry and uh, I will also plug them into the uh, uh, optionals so for sim proxy and proxy the proxy is for the viewport so that the viewport will not um, or has not need to draw all the geometry the full uh, mesh and i will place a poly reduction before that um, i highly recommend not to do this inside of the component geometry you better do this inside of the geometry or the original geometry subgrade yourself this um, has the advantage that when you change or bake the um, component uh, to USD, you don't have to recalculate this poly reduction, which takes sometimes quite long. So I will reduce it very heavily, and you see we have some halo geometry right now. This is because the scene will be shown in the viewport too, so we will hide this, and now they they are gone. And this is our proxy now. And this is our high res so i will jump up and we will only see our proxy in the viewport this is exactly what we what we want and then i will jump into the material library and we'll create a new material for renderman i call this pig hat and i will place a llama surface of course and the llama diffuse into the first input and I make it green now and this is only the library so oh, excuse though so this is only the library it will not be assigned to geometry at this point we assign the material to the geometry at this point at the component material and the only thing that you need to do is you jump into this um, scene graph again and 
ch uh, choose your shape, your render shape, and drag and drop it into the, the primitives and uh, your material from materials into the pick hat. And then you have your component. And when I start to render right now, I save this. When I start to render this right now, we see the full rest geometry. We can also add some light to this, but this um, um, has to be done right before that. So you um, maybe I should show this. So let us say you want to add other um, objects as well. You have to do this right in here. So um, when you want to place a light into this asset to just for a demonstration. Um, you have to make sure that the path is exactly lining up into the geo context right in here. Otherwise, you see it's not working. So what we have to do is we have to place it in geo. So we make a new folder, geo lights, and we have to check if this is correctly placed. So this is not placed because we have to make sure that's in assets too. So slash assets. And now uh, maybe we don't need the geo itself. We only need assets. Oh, well, something like that. And now we have to check. Yeah, it's not in Geo. Yeah, my bad. We do this again. Geo. Do we have it now? Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. We have not stored. Ah, my bad. I, yeah, as you can see, you have to be very precise in changing your name. So now we have the lights in the asset as well as in our component. So here we can make it a um, lot darker and maybe something like that. Oh, something like that. So. As you can see, we can add multiple objects to this component, but you have to make sure that your um, additional objects are stored in the right path in assets and then your group lights and so on. And um, what you then have to do is you, you place a name or we have to uh, give some namings. So we will call this um, asset pick hat. This is our path, so our asset is now called pick hat, not asset anymore. But you have to make sure that it is assets right in here because um, this works with assets here on top. And something like that. This is basically a renaming for our outputted asset. When you have multiple different variants. You have to give uh, a new material name to the variants itself. So if this is one variant, you call this material variant one, for example, and you give it also a material, uh, a variant name. But this cannot be the same naming. So ha you have to have different namings. So I call this variant full pick hat, something like that, pick hat, and you will see that we have now a material variant full pick hat, as you can see. In case you have made an arrow, you would have the material as well as the geometry, you would be able to choose one of both. Um, when you only have one of these variants right in, in this drop-down menu, you made it prob probably right. 
So, and all what we have to do is we have to uh, save it to our location. Um, currently, it's in our hip um, um, placement in our um, yeah project folder. I hit save to disk and it will probably store it in, yeah, this is the project. It will probably store it right in here. So this was my first test. So we can delete that. Um, we have the picket, where is it? Here's the picket. So this is our USD file. And here we have the geo material, the payload and the USD itself. Uh, what we also need is we need to have something like um, a render preview, a thumbnail. And here we can choose different um, render engines. Um, of course, uh, we could al also use the renderman RIS. And all what you have to do is you cr generate the thumbnail. And this will render the image and will hopefully generate an image right in here. And as you can see, this sometimes is not working uh, currently, not fully implemented yet. So I highly recommend to use the OpenGL for now. This is your screen and it will look like this when you turn this on. Of course, we can also spin the camera so that we get a better preview and I hit, uh, wow, wow, I hit a generate thumbnail again. And now we should see our proxy, of course. This is not the rendered version. This is only that. How we can make sure this is um, not gray, um, how we can make it as well in the proxy green. And all of what you have to do is you have to give it a, a color. So I can drop down a color right in here and make this color um, also green uh, for the primitives. Of course, I have the wrong, so something like that or something like that. So, and when we now go up, you see it's green now. Of course, we lost all the um, color attributes since we reduced the poly resolution. So maybe we can crank this up much more. So now it's much better. And when we now uh, save this again and generate the thumbnail, it should look much better to understand. So this is the way to go. I will save this for you. And the other great thing is that we can now do is we can paint this asset. Um, we, what we have to do is we have to save it and add it to the other asset gallery. The easiest way would be to directly bake it from the component. So you only what you have to do is you add to the asset gallery. And when we now look into our layout asset gallery, we would see our picket right in here. And it gets stored in your Houdini 19 uh, home folder. So where all your settings are, your user folder. And here we have the asset gallery database. And yeah. So when we have stored it to our asset database, it has a path to our asset folder right in here. So this is the path to our asset that it is stored in the database. And the nice advantage about this is this is independent from your project. So I can create a completely new project or a completely new branch. So we could use a new lob network, lobnet2, and I will place a grid right in here. Um, just for demonstration, it's a ground plane. And I drop down a layout lob. And all what you have to do is you drag and drop this picket into this 
um, section right in here and then we are able to place this asset. Of course, uh, we uh, could change some of these random values and of course the alignment and so on. So I will place one right here and I can transform this one. So we, of course we have to make sure that when we um, paint those assets, we have to make sure that our asset is not below the ground. So keep in mind when you want to paint this and when you want to scatter it, that the origin is your placement coordinate. So what we do is we um, move uh, the transfer or we transform it to move it slightly up. So something like that. So it's on top. Um, go down the chain, rebake it. We don't need to recache the picket itself. We go right in here and as you can see, it already has updated. This is really nice. And when we render now, we get our light, which is stored in this asset, of course. So here we have a new one and we make it really bright. So as you can see, that light is the light that we have stored in the asset itself. So, but as you can see, our shaders are working. Uh, what you see currently is that we have no normal attributes and a very um, rough shading. And this is because you have to place um, the normal node inside of your um, um, geometry uh, creation, um, inside of the sub create for in, in this example. And here you have to define, you have to place a normal attribute, otherwise you will not get something. So we will re rebake Go to our lobnet and here it looks more correct, as you can see. So this is um, the majority that you need to know about um, the component workflow. And of course, when you have more variants, you have to um, drop down a component geometry variant version. And this will be placed um, right in here. So you could create multiple different variants and they all, all have to be plugged into this. So we could use something like that. It's the same, but this time we don't have a light and I need to rename this, of course. This is variant two for the mat. Oh no, we, yeah, we have a second material, so maybe we can make this pink, or yeah, pink. Yeah, I think it's pink, and we call this variant two and variant full picket two or pink, what you want. And of course, we need to make sure that our materials have also a different name. That's the pink one. This is not automatically updating. So drag and drop it to this one exactly. So, and when we look here, we should have two different versions. So the green one with the light and the other one without any light. This is how you will um, work with the components. Of course, you can choose your a different naming. And yeah, this is the way to go. So I hope it helps you in the next uh, short session. I will show you how you can use those pick hats to scatter them with different, or I can show it on trees, how you can scatter them across a field, across a surface, and yeah, see you in the next chapter.